Welcome everybody to another episode of Finns Nation. I'm your host, Lewis Song, and today we're going to be talking about something that apparently got Dolphins Twitter all up in arms, and it got Tua Anon to make another reappearance. So, recently signed safety Deshaun Elliott, who again, I remind everyone, was a former college teammate of fellow safety Brandon Jones, he said something that got Tua Anon very, very, very upset. And we will get into all the details, as well as if we have the time, talk about some of the things that Mike McDaniel said to the media just earlier yesterday. Now, before we get too far into it, I want to go ahead and welcome our brand new sponsor, our now head sponsor, You Break Wheel Fix. You Break Wheel Fix is a wheel repair and remanufacturing company with over 20 years of experience. They specialize in complete wheel repair, repairing wheels from curb rash, bends, and cracks, and they also specialize in refinishing, polishing, machining, and custom colors that will suit your car's needs. Lastly, You Break Wheel Fix offers a full array of factory and custom wheel and tire applications. So if you want to go ahead and get your wheels really fixed up for you, make sure you contact them at 305-748-0112. Again, that's 305-748-0112 or at You Break Wheel Fix on all social media platforms. Get your wheels upgraded today and start showing your Dolphins fandom them in the best way that you possibly can by going on the road and showing just everybody no matter where you go how much of a Dolphins fan you really are. And this show is also brought to you, as always, by PrizePicks.com. PrizePicks.com is a revolutionary fantasy platform where you can now pick up to six different players across professional sports leagues, whether that's the NFL, the NBA, the MLB, one of each. It's up to you to decide. Just choose the over or the under on those individual players' fantasy projections, whether that's individual stats or the classic fantasy point projections. They'll give you free squares. Today is also Taco Tuesday, so make sure you're watching out for those if you want to join up today. And make sure on Friday you check out the Flex Friday specials where you can possibly get your money back if you lose or multiply the amount of money you normally can win. With offers like that, it's hard to justify not signing up if you really want to get into the fantasy game. Use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and they will match up to $100 on your initial deposit when you sign up. Again, that's promo code 5, F-I-V-E. Go to pricepicks.com, use that promo code to sign up, and they will basically give you $100 if you deposit $100 when you sign up. So go ahead and get started winning on their dime today. All right, so let's get into what happened exactly. So obviously everybody knows that when Tuanon shows up, and you always know because they'll say to expect them, whenever Tuanon ends up showing up, it's because somebody said something that could be implied as being anti-Tua or pro someone other than Tua. Now, in reality, this is not really that big of a deal. However, this does kind of bring back memories of Vince Beagle promoting the idea of bringing Deshaun Watson to the Miami Dolphins, if anybody remembers that. And we were pretty critical of him as well. I remember I was doing a show with Kai Chen Chisholm, who recently returned to Five Reasons Sports. And one of our other constituents, Jakari Givens, had also called into the show. And he was basically giving his thoughts on the whole Deshaun Watson thing versus Tua. Now, Jakari has said that Tua can be very good, but he is also a big fan of Deshaun Watson. And he likened it to, and this is where I had, this is where I really got upset because just the metaphor itself just kind of bothered me. It kind of just rubbed me the wrong way. No disrespect to Jakari at all, but just this is not how I tend to view life such as it is. He likened it to when you're with your girlfriend, you're walking down the street and you see a prettier girl walking by and you just kind of stare at the other girl that's walking by while you are still with your girlfriend. It's basically that meme that always pops up on Twitter every once in a while whenever a better player shows up and you already have a good player. I'm sure everybody has their own rendition of that meme in every single medium that you can imagine, but it's basically that in real life. And so whenever I heard that, I was like, what are you talking about, Jock? I am not like that even one little bit. If I am with my girlfriend, I am very happy with my girlfriend. I am now actually very happily getting ready to be married to my fiance. So with that being said, the idea that we have other players coming out and saying, I am advocating officially for this other player to come on the team and take over ahead of the other guy who is already here, is it really that big a deal knowing that Deshaun Elliott was former teammates with another quarterback that has been rumored to the Miami Dolphins for quite some time? That quarterback, of course, being none other than Lamar Jackson, who as of yesterday when you're listening to this, 
went ahead and officially said that he had requested a trade from the Baltimore Ravens in early March. And he announced that all over social media on the very day that John Harbaugh was meeting with the media saying that he still expected uh, Lamar Jackson to eventually make his way back to Baltimore. So can you get the sense that Lamar Jackson is really pushing his leverage here because the Ravens are in a bad situation right now, in my opinion. They either have to give Lamar every single penny that he wants or he's going to walk or he refuse to play. He'll do the Deshaun Watson thing. Now, Deshaun Watson's getting paid. Whether he performs or not doesn't matter. He is getting paid. So maybe that's the thing that's holding the Baltimore Ravens back. Is it in bad faith to assume that as soon as you get your money, you're basically going to suck up a storm? I don't particularly think that that's something that you should assume of anybody because there is still the matter of personal pride. Do I expect Deshaun Watson to play better after one season in Cleveland? Yeah, I expect him to come back a little bit, but I think that if you're really such a superstar quarterback, then you don't fall off a cliff the way that you did just like that. Or if that's the very much the case, then should I expect Aaron Rodgers to not look all that great in a New York Jets uniform? I don't know. It just doesn't feel very... There's something wrong there. It's not kosher. So now here comes Deshaun Elliott. And he sees the news that Lamar Jackson says that he wants to be traded out of Baltimore. He doesn't want to be in Baltimore anymore. He basically, I'm, I'm, I'm reading it as we speak, exactly what it was that was said. Lamar Jackson, a letter to my fans. It was a, it's an official tweet. It is still up. I want to first thank you all for all of the love and support you consistently show towards me. All of you are amazing, and I appreciate you all so much. I want you all to know not to believe everything you read about me. Let me personally answer your questions. And I, it continues. On. In regards to my future plans, as of March 2nd, I requested a trade from the Ravens organization for which the Ravens have not been interested in meeting my value. Any and everyone that has met me or been around me knows I love the game of football and my dream is to help a team win the Super Bowl. You all are great, but I had to make a business decision that was best for my family and I. No matter how far I go or where my career takes me, I'll continue to be close to my fans of Baltimore Flock Nation and the entire state of Maryland. You'll see me again. Now, that sounds like a goodbye if I ever heard one. Now, does this mean that the Ravens will not eventually meet whatever his demands are and give it to him? Or is this even more of a leverage ploy and he'll it, the Ravens will eventually meet the demands that he had and Lamar Jackson will raise them even more saying that, oh, well, you're willing to pay me this? Well, now pay me this because you're over a barrel. This is the danger, I guess you could say, of what it means to have a franchise quarterback. Because if they're really good enough, they can basically say, you're going to give me a blank check and I will write the amount that I want and you're going to pay it to me or you're going to have to try to find someone like me all over again. So here we are now with Deshaun Elliott coming out and saying that he wants Lamar Jackson to come to Miami. It's understandable that he would vouch for his former teammate. Obviously, Deshaun Elliott played in, in Baltimore with Lamar Jackson. He, they know each other well, so they root for each other. Makes sense, right? But here's the problem. Miami Dolphins fans everywhere, and personally, I can at least appreciate the defense that they come to for their quarterback, because if this had been Ryan Tannehill, I'm sure that they would be all over the Lamar Jackson stuff. But with Tua, who, again, I have to remind everybody, had MVP caliber numbers throughout much of the season, and he only recently had a fall off versus San Francisco and the Los Angeles Chargers. That was when things started to go downhill, and of course, the injury happened right after that. It makes sense for Deshaun Elliott to vouch for Lamar. Now, the problem was when he said, come to Miami, which, part, by the way, that part of his little thread is now gone. He did not, he, he deleted that tweet. And he literally went out later and said, hey, guys, just calm down. This is Twitter. And it's, yeah, you don't mess with, you don't mess with Dolphins Twitter when it comes to Tua. And I am sure that that is now a lesson that he is going to learn. He's not going to do that again. But again, in spite of the fact that I don't particularly see it very serious, it does lead to a bad look when other players are vouching for other players who are trying to get the starting quarterback replaced. Even if that wasn't his true implication, even if that was just in jest saying, hey man, come to Miami, let's play together again because we worked so well the first time. Even if that's all it was, you can't ignore what the implication is there. By getting Lamar Jackson, you are basically saying, I want you to replace Tua. 
Just like when Vince Beagle said it. He basically, he, he did the whole eyes emoji thing, I think. I can't remember what it was. I can't go all the way back there. But Vince Beagle basically said that he was in favor of Deshaun Watson coming to Miami. And again, in order for Deshaun Watson to come to Miami, he would have to replace Tua. Now, I am on record as saying that the Miami Dolphins not getting Deshaun Watson is probably the biggest bullet they ever could have dodged. Not only is it a PR nightmare with everything that went down with Watson, but now with the amount of money that he's making and the performance that he put together his first year in Cleveland, such as it was, that was probably the most miserable experience I've ever seen. And I always had to bet the under on Deshaun Watson because in spite of all the weapons that he had, the fact that he had Nick Chubb as the running back to really loosen things up for him, the fact that he had Kareem Hunt backing up that guy, none of that mattered. Because Deshaun Watson was terrible. I literally was like, there has to be something wrong here. I watched a game of the Cleveland Browns with Deshaun Watson in it, and I couldn't believe I was looking at the same player. Like, is this the guy that they're spending what feels like half of their salary cap on? This is Deshaun Watson. This is MVP, sit out the season to get out of Houston, Deshaun Watson. And the Cleveland Browns paid him. And I thought to myself, boy, am I glad to have Tua. Boy, am I glad to have Tua, because if we decided to make that trade like Brian Flores presumably wanted, what kind of a hole would we be in now? Because it would have been Deshaun Watson that came in after a backup quarterback got finished playing. So maybe someone like Teddy Bridgewater. Let's just pretend that Teddy Bridgewater had to play the first half of the season because Tua was no longer available because they had traded him to Houston to go ahead and get Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson would have been suspended just like normal. He would not have been available. And then he would have done that, what he did in Cleveland. Could you imagine the vitriol and the anger and the rage that Dolphins Twitter would have over the fact that they put all that investment and the guy's not even good? So now here we go again with Lamar Jackson. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Lamar Jackson would be bad as soon as he got to Miami. I'm far from it. I'm sure he would be fantastic in Miami, and he would be very electrifying, and everybody would be super happy to see him running across the field for a 75-yard scamper. It would be a lot of fun. Yes, it would. I can say that, but I could also say that I don't want Lamar Jackson at the price that he would be willing, to, at, at the only price that he would be willing to take. Lamar Jackson wants so much money that he would basically, like, who would you get rid of to make room for Lamar Jackson? Are you going to trade Tyreek? Are you going to dump Bradley Chubb and Xavier Howard and Jalen Ramsey and all these other superstar players that you've just managed to acquire because Tua Tungavailoa does not cost a lot? Again, people keep saying that the salary cap doesn't exist. It very much does. And when you ignore it, eventually you become a team like the Rams that end up having to shed talent because they can't afford to pay everybody that they went ahead and acquired. We didn't get Jalen Ramsey because the Rams just decided they were done with Jalen Ramsey. That was a salary dump, guys. We're paying what the Rams were going to pay him because they can't afford to. So Deshaun Elliott, if you're listening to this, I am sure that you still have lots to offer as a safety. And I am sure that now that you have learned just how extreme... Dolphins Twitter can be that you will probably not say anything talking even in even in even an implication you will not say anything bad about Tua because again he didn't even mention Tua in the tweet it's not like he say I want you to replace my current teammate Tua Tagovailoa and come and play here instead he didn't say anything like that all he did was come out in favor of his former teammate because they know each other and they're probably friends which is understandable again now all of this is moot. And you know why it's moot? Because even if Deshaun Elliott had officially stated that he does not want to and he prefers Lamar Jackson, there's one person in the whole world whose opinion matters more than anybody else's, and it basically cements once and for all, once again, that the Miami Dolphins are not interested in Lamar Jackson, they're not interested in Aaron Rodgers, they're not interested in Tom Brady or any of these other quarterbacks that they've been linked to over the past several months. Tua Tagovailoa is the guy, and the one who says so is none other than the head coach, Mike McDaniel. I've heard rumors that Mike McDaniel wanted this guy, or Mike McDaniel wanted that guy, and he's just stuck with Tua, and he's making the most of his situation. No, 
That's not what it is. Oh my gosh, it's so annoying whenever I hear it. That you, I, you, you guys make me sound like two anon sometimes. Whenever I hear people talk like that, it's ridiculous. So Mike McDaniel meets with the media, and he basically says, "Well, why did the Miami Dolphins pick up the fifth-year option on Tua so early?" Part of it was, and this is literally a factor that he said, is that he needs to make sure that the media hears that we have this faith in Tua and that we can stop all the talk about other things. He didn't say that last part, but he did say that he wanted to make sure the South Florida media knew about this. So here we go again, having to basically tell everybody, listen, Tua is our guy. I remember last the season before Mike McDaniel showed up and all the Deshaun Watson speculation was going on. Why won't Brian Flores say that Tua is their quarterback and that they're not interested in this other player? Why won't Brian Flores outright state once and for all that they do not want Deshaun Watson and he never did it? And we were acting like, oh, well, if he just said that they're not interested in Deshaun Watson, all the talk would stop. All this year is proving to me is that none of that is true. If Brian Flores had come out and said explicitly, I do not want Deshaun Watson because Tua is my quarterback. Even if he had said that, I truly be, feel like it would not have made a difference. Because here we are right now with Tom Brady, Lamar Jackson, basically every other quarterback that is not Tua. And Mike McDaniel has been very explicit, very outright with the fact that he has confidence in Tua. He's doing every action that he can think of to make it known that Tua is the guy in Miami. I don't know what else he can do. Like, the only thing that he could do is negotiate a massive contract extension right now and give up one of the advantages that he currently has right now as the Miami Dolphins chase a Super Bowl. So, he literally said this during the press conference, and I quote as I am about to read this to you, to you guys. It's obviously a slight advantage from a salary cap perspective because of the most obvious thing in the world that veteran quarterbacks that play very well can approach 40% of your salary cap. So it's just something that is currently the state that if you can, if you're able to have a good team be productive, yeah, you're able to spend extra resources other places. So yes, it makes complete sense. The, the Dolphins did everything and said everything they possibly could to make it known that Tua is the starting quarterback at least for the next two years. In the foreseeable future, it's still going to be Tua because Tua has shown so much potential in such a short amount of time. And no, he hasn't been Joe Burrow. He hasn't been Justin Herbert as far as their physical prowess, as far as just what kind of incredible highlight reel plays that they can make because they're just that gifted, physically speaking. Justin Herbert's arm is almost unparalleled in the NFL. Joe Burrow has a stronger arm than Tua as well. He also has really good weapons like Tua does, so give him credit for that. So, okay, Joe Burrow's a little bit better than Tua in a vacuum. Okay, big hairy deal. They're both really, really good. But I don't see anybody taking away credit from Joe Burrow because he has incredible talent around him. Why does Joe Burrow get credit, but Tua gets trashed? I don't understand. So with all that said, we'll probably have more to talk about tomorrow. We'll see if anything comes in the aftermath of this. Probably not. Deshaun Elliott is not in trouble or anything. I sincerely doubt that's going to be the case. It's just another one of those days where Tuanon has to come out and say, hey, don't diss our quarterback by asking for this other quarterback that everybody and their mother, including the coaches, have already said thanks but no thanks. If you haven't gone already yet, go check out You Break Wheel Fix, the wheel repair and remanufacturing company with over 20 years of experience that specializes in complete wheel repair, repairing wheels from curb rash, bends, and cracks, and they offer a full array of factory and custom wheel and tire applications that can give you some custom colors that'll make your car look awesome. Contact them at 305-748-0112 or at any social media platform under You Break Wheel Fix. For anybody who's wondering how that's spelled, it's U B R E A K. W-H-E-E-L-F-I-X. So you just follow along with that. On all social media platforms, that's where they are. Get your wheels upgraded today. Again, that's 305-748-0112 to go ahead and contact them and get yourself started today. And make sure you go to pricepicks.com and use the promo code 5, that's F-I-V-E, and go ahead and get started with Price Picks right now to get up to $100 on your initial sign-up deposit. You're still going to start making money on their dime. And today is Taco Tuesday, so make sure you're checking out for discounted picks to help get yourself on the winner's circle a lot faster. That's going to be it for this show. We will see you all tomorrow for more Fins Nation.